growing up, we tend to hear people talk about false worship, what's false and what's true. And we, we tend to label a person's worship as false or true, but that's based upon what? That's based upon what? We have no right to label somebody's worship as false or true. We actually have, I'm going to say that again. We have no right to label somebody's worship as false or true just because they might practice different from us. That's not what the Bible labels false or true worship and so again in this project that i'm working on i come across this first now now y'all already saw what happened when i came across <laughs> the verse uh, or what i came across in my studies about that prayer of imprecation and and how we shouldn't do that but now I come across this verse and this is such a blessing that look i just keep the camera on it y'all don't need to see me anyway i'm not cute y'all don't need to see me <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm beautiful. I'm not cute. I'm beautiful. Anyway, uh, y'all need to see this. And I needed to see this. What defines worship as being false worship is when we have a lot to say and we don't keep these words. Like, oh, wow. Like, I, I love this. I had to highlight it, of course. And I'm going to be reading this from different translations personally, personally for myself. But I'm showing this to you from the NIV. And I encourage you to read it from your various translations. It says, guard your steps when you go into the house or when you go to the house of God. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Like we don't need to just read through it. It's easy to read through it. But look. When you go to the house of God, guard your steps. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Now, listen, <laughs> check this out. When we go to, we call the house of God church building right the the building we call it church you know we, we'll say i'm going to church right and so we're talking about the building and so i'm going to talk about the building at the moment now i know that we the people are the church and we come together at a sanctuary to worship but we call that the building itself church and it's no i'm not going to tarp on that it's not really a big deal it tells us in the scripture to go near to listen that means hush, be quiet, listen, rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. I'm about to read that another, because see, I got to get this, look, look, you listen, when I speak, it hits my ears first. It hits my inner ear and my outer ear first. It says, go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools a lot of times when we go into church we go in speaking we go in praising and we're told to you know we we it says enter into the um sanctuary with praise and thanksgiving um so so we do that but listen this says go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Who do not know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. Even in these songs, listen, I'm about to, I'm about to share this. There's this song. It's one of uh, it's a song that I like, actually. It's called The Prayer of Jabez. Bless me, bless me, oh Lord, bless me indeed, Elijah. I know y'all heard that. If you haven't, go look it up. Go, go to YouTube and look it up. It's called The Prayer of Jabez. And one of the things that I learned when singing that, it was like I would I would be increased, I would be stretched, and, and I would be blessed. But but again, increasing stretching that's that's uncomfortable sometimes, but you're being ta taken into a larger place. That prayer is powerful. 
even when you're singing it. And so I've learned that that we need to pay attention to the words that we're singing. We need to pay attention to even even in song, we need to pay attention to what we're singing and what we're saying. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven. You are on earth. On earth. So let your words be few. As a dream comes when there are many cares, so the speech of a fool when there are many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay. Like when we sing, okay, so here's another one. This is another song that I like. I like this song. It like means a lot to me, and especially in prayer and worship. I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing. No, that's a vow that we're making when we're telling God that we surrender so in prayer um in in worship when we're singing we need to pay attention to the words that we're saying even when we worship in song when we tell God that he is our all in all and then we turn around and after we get through we sing some great amazing songs the songs was good and the choir laid it down and the prayer was good and the pastor had a lot to say and we amen through the whole prayer when you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. So if I say to God that I'm surrendering all to him, then I need to do that. I need to let y'all hear me now. I'm not saying you. I'm saying me that I need to do that. But that this is for all of us. All of us. Again, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. When you go into that church. When you go before the Lord in prayer, when you when you're worshiping, when when you go to the house of God. And when you understand what the house of God is, you know that that this is not necessarily um, the church building itself when you begin to understand. And so you're going to guard your steps at all times. But when you go into the house of God, guard your steps. Go near to listen. When I sit before the word of God, when I'm coming into the house of God, when I sit before the word, I need to sit to listen rather than offer the sacrifice of fools. The sacrifice of fools. That's the words of my mouth. That's the words of our mouth who do not know that they do wrong. Like, wow, I had to share this. I just knew I was going to share this. Don't be quick with your mouth. Don't be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. We need to open our ears rather than our mouths. It says, let your words be few. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to soak this in, y'all. Let your words be few. When you make a vow to God, don't delay in fulfilling it. Because he has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. If I say to God, I trust you then I need to do that. If I say to God, I'm giving it to you, then I need to do that. It's better to not vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. That part gets every last one of us in trouble, me included, me at the top of the list. That part gets everybody in trouble. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin and do not protest to the temple messenger now the temple messenger you guys the temple messenger is your pastors <laughs> the temple messenger he is a messenger he is a messenger his job as pastor is to speak to the church to speak to the people of god what thus says the lord he is a messenger so it says, so I like that. I This is the, the, I like that. The temple messenger. Do not protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hand? Listen, put that again. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? I'm going to do a whole separate post on this. Like y'all have heard me. For a few years now, say, watch your words, watch your words, watch your words. Do not protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Whatever that vow was, whatever you said you was going to do, don't say my vow was a Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your Who's going to destroy the work of your hands? 
Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? I'm going to ask again, who's going to destroy the work of your hands? So when you're going through something, pay attention to what you said. Pay attention to the words of your mouth. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, stand in awe of God. I thought this was awesome. It's talking about false worship. So what declares or what makes worship false is when we do a whole bunch of talking. And then we don't stand behind what we say. Y'all have heard, heard people say, your word is your bond. Well, that's true. That's true. I'm paying attention to this too. I'm paying attention. Listen, even when you say, I do in marriage, and then you turn around and say, my vow was a mistake. Do not protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake, even in marriage. Do not let your mouth lead you to sin. When you say before the Lord, y'all like, like to get married in these churches. Y'all also like to go down to these courthouses to get married. When y'all do that and then and you say, I do, and, and all this other stuff. And then all of a sudden, the person or whatever happens and you don't like it and you decide that you don't. It says, do not let your mouth lead you into sin. Do not protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? That even includes marriage. Ooh -wee. Okay, y'all got to go back. Stop calling people worship false. <laughs> you don't know their heart. Only God does.